Father Vogel. We continue our series on St. Francis de Sales' introduction to the devout life. We are in part three, looking at the different virtues. Uh, now in chapter 37, as we looked at how to use our reason properly, now we're going to look in this about our desires and have uh, proper desires. So this, ter this uh, term desire is really referring to you know, the kind of strong feelings or emotions uh, or attractions that we may have to something. Desires in and of themselves can be either good or bad, depending upon what the desire is for. So he uh, is going to go through a number of things which we want to be careful about uh, uh, that may not be good in desires. So the first one he looks at is to, tells us to uh, watch against the desires for sinful things. Obviously, this should be you know fairly apparent that we don't want to desire things that are actually sinful. Then he also says to not desire things that are dangerous. So there might be things that maybe aren't sinful, but maybe they're dangerous because they put us maybe in an occasion in which we could possibly sin. He continues by saying that we shouldn't desire honors or positions or even visions or ecstasies. So we don't want things that are, you know, that would, in a sense, puff up our ego by um, having, you know, higher position at work or, or, or even in the spiritual life to, to want to be like some of the saints where we have, you know, the highest visions um, or uh, um, the most. Appearances of, of Jesus or, or, or Mary or the saints. We shouldn't, you know, spend time desiring those things. Not that we shouldn't want to be close to God, but um, that kind of imaginations can lead us away from what's important at the time. He says, and, and so that's kind of connected to this next one, he says that we shouldn't desire things in the distant future. Uh, because if we're desiring things that could happen possibly in the future, we can often be negligent about the things that are actually going on right now, the things that we need to take care of. It also could cause us anxiety, you know, if we're, if we're thinking about so far in the future and wondering, you know, how, is, how are we going to prepare ourselves for that? Um, he gives an example of that the, the young can fall into this trap often because they'll desire things before their time, um, desiring what they might get later on in life compared to what uh, they have right now. Um, he also says that uh, when it comes to our vocation that God gives us, that we shouldn't desire a vocation other than our own. So for example, a married woman, he says, shouldn't desire the religious vocation um, during that time that they're, they're married, because it's a, that's not what God has called them to. The same way, somebody who's in religious shouldn't desire to get married. Or another way, to, uh, another example might be, you know, someone who's married shouldn't desire that. Oh, if only I were in a married relationship with somebody else. Um, you know, this is not; those desires are not going to be helpful. They're contrary to the vocations that God has called you to. Uh, another one he says is not for us not to desire to take what another has. You know, this is the the, um, the sin of envy. To want what somebody else has. Now, this doesn't mean that we can't desire when we see some some good that somebody else has. That we can desire to uh, want to attain that through our own work, as long as it's not the kind of desire where it's, you know, I want that and I don't want them to have that. You know, that's not going to uh, to be a good desire. Um, so uh, he gives another example of that during the time of illness. Um, not to desire to do what you can at that time. So when we get ill, we might, you know, our minds, our desires, oh, oh man, I want to get back to work, I want to be able to do this thing, and I can't because I'm ill. He says, you know, this, th those aren't desires from God because they really end up being a waste of time. You know, we, can, we can't change the fact that right now I'm, I'm ill and I can't do those things. And he says it really takes away from the desires that we ought to be uh, we ought to have a desire to be patient during the illness, a desire to be to be resigned, accepting of this is 
it might be God's will for me at this point. Um, the desire to use this as a kind of mortification, uh, to be obedient and to be gentle in the, in the midst of suffering so that we're more united with, with Jesus and his sufferings. He goes on and says, I would not even wish that we desire better talent and better judgment because of those desires are silly. They take the place of the desire which we should have to improve our, our own talent such as it is. We are not to desire the means of serving God which we do not have. Instead, we are to faithfully use those which we do have. So this doesn't mean that we shouldn't desire to, get, to be better, to grow in our abilities. But he says if we recognize that we don't have a certain talent in some area, not to spend all that time daydreaming, if only I could do this. You know, instead of focusing on these are the talents that I actually do have from God, and by His grace I can grow and become better in those areas. Uh, to try not to desire to be somebody that we're not. You know, if God has given us certain talents, those are the things that He wants us to use to serve Him. Uh, he says also in the spiritual life not to desire crosses except insofar as you have borne the ones that you've already been given. He says it's an error to desire martyrdom without having enough courage to bear an insult. Because that's sometimes what we will do is, you know, we'll think about, oh God, if only you would, you know, I would I would be faithful if, if, if uh, I had to go across this, this time of martyrdom. You know, we have these really high thoughts. But then the kind of cross, the difficulty that we're supposed to bear immediately, we get upset with our spouse, like, like that. Well, how do we think that we're going to be able to do something much greater when we can't do what is much smaller? He says the enemy often arouses in us these kind of ardent desires for things that are absent and that may never come our way. It is to turn us away from the present things however small those may be, which we could draw great profit. You know, we could grow in great holiness by bearing those little things that we have to do each day instead of daydreaming upon all the great things that we would do for God if we had the opportunity. No, be faithful in those small things that we have in, the, in front of us. Also, when it comes to temptations, he says, don't desire uh, God to send those temptations. Some kind of thought that, like, well, if God gave me those temptations, then I can really show how how solid I am in following Him. Uh, he says also, don't fill your spirit with with many desires, neither with worldly desires, for they will corrupt you entirely, nor with spiritual ones, for they will overwhelm you. So, uh, it's following God is not so much about you know desiring things, but it's to desire to do His will in what he gives us at that moment, rather than desiring things that are different. St. Francis continues by uh, talking about a kind of phenomenon for those that are, you know, kind of beginning and, and been enlivened within the spiritual life. He says that when our spirit is purified, feeling free from evil dispositions, it has an enormous hunger for spiritual things. And this is very good to have these spiritual desires. But in a state of a kind of starvation, he says, it desires a thousand kinds of of spiritual exercises, practices of mortification, of penance, of humility, of charity, of prayer. And these are a good sign, he says, that it's to have an appetite for these spiritual things. But, he says, we have to be careful. Are we ready to digest them all? All these, the, all these new desires that we want to consume. He says, instead, choose from among them, from among these different desires, with the advice of a spiritual father, what you can practice and accomplish now, and then turn those into something very good in following God. And once you complete those, then God will send again other desires which you'll be able to realize in your own time. We won't be able to do all things at once, and we can become overzealous and kind of burn ourselves out in a sense. And, and this newness of following God. So he concludes by saying, I suggest, you know, this, you know, doing things each in their according to their time, not just for spiritual, but also for the worldly things. Uh, without doing this, uh, we will, we might end up living in a kind of
kind of anxiety or eagerness for things before they're